Hi, I'm Apostle TV Walker. Want to welcome you once again to Disciples of Faith Global Outreach, where we are reaching the world one share at a time. So glad to have you here with us, and I'm glad that you're in this worship environment with us today. You know, it's a rainy Sunday. Uh, this is the beginning of November. Uh, but, you know, the rain reminds me of, of what the scripture says in Isaiah, that God's word is really just like that rain that comes down from heaven, that, you know, it's going to accomplish the purpose that it's actually sent for. You know, even in rainy days, there's a purpose for the rain and the rain has in it properties that cause things to grow. And God's word is exactly like that in the word of God, though there are places of comfort, though there is, you know, there are places of uh, revelation and understanding. One of the great things about the word of God is that it is like seed and it, within the word of God is the divine ability for those who receive it to grow. And I'm glad that you're here today because I know this is good ground. I know that you are here and I believe that there is a divine reason why you're here. And that is for you to get the word of God and to receive that seed and to grow. I'm excited about what God is doing today. I'm excited about what we're unpacking today. We're really kind of taking off on what we started on Thursday uh, with the Tower of Babel. You know, we talked a little bit about that and we're going to recap a little bit, but I think that there's even some greater revelation that you're going to receive today. So once again, I'm glad that you're here. We're in a worship environment. We're here for the purpose of worship. You know, the reason why we're gathered together is not just so we can have something that is a form of church, but we're really here to be able to really be the church that God has called us to be. And we're challenged today because, you know, there's a way that we're accustomed, a way that we're used to having church. But the Lord says, where two or three are gathered together, he would be right there in the midst, right? And we understand that the Bible says that God's power is so, is so great that he has the ability to even send a word and healing can actually happen. So the challenge that we have today is to really enter into an environment of worship that might be different from the way that we were accustomed to worship, but you are not different. God is not different. Worship is not different. And if all of those things come together, we should be able to have an awesome worship experience. Experience. So I want to encourage you to enter in. I want to encourage you to really come into this place for the one purpose, and that's to worship God in everything that you do. Worship him in your giving. Worship him in your with your praise. Worship him even in the study, and worship him in your attention and listening to the word of God. I'm going to be reading today out of the book of Genesis, chapter number uh, 11, and I'm going to read verses 8 through 11. That's going to come from the King James Version. We're going to have a word of prayer, and then we're going to dive directly directly into the word of God to see what the Lord is trying to preach to you today. All right, let, 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 let me read this for you and you're hearing this is again coming from the uh, King, New King James Version. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth and they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, so I want you to get that from that spot there and from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. This is the genealogy of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begot Arphahad two years after the flood. After he begot Arphahad, Shem lived 500 years and begot sons and daughters. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you once again for allowing us to be here. God, we are in rapt attention and enthusiasm. God, waiting for you to do what only you can do. Heal, deliver, and set free. God, we thank you right now for the power of the anointing that is already in us right now to destroy the yoke. So God, with the anointing that you've given us, we destroy the yoke of every distraction that is there. We destroy the yoke of anything that would stand against us hearing your word. But not only just hearing your word, but doing your word. So God, we thank Thank you right now for the empowerment of your word that causes us to not only hear but to do that gives us both the will and to do of your good pleasure so god those that's your word that's what you said that's what you promised so god if this word is not heard it's not because the word is not going forth it's because the hearers was have stopped up their ears if this word is not manifest it is not because it is not within your power or your will to manifest but it's because we've stubbornly decided to stay where we are but God, I believe right now that I'm speaking to those that are ready to move from faith to faith and glory to glory, that are ready to move to new dimensions and new levels in you, experiencing your power and your majesty at a whole new place and are desiring to worship you and levels and places that they've never been. So God, we thank you right now for portals and open doors for what you're going to do in Jesus name. 
Amen and amen. Now, let's get into the word of God. The Bible says here that, you know, we, we understand that man had had gone and, and was charged with repopulating the world by God. Uh, this was given to Noah and Noah obviously passes this along. And this is an acknowledgement and a knowledge that they have concerning the mandate that God has placed on their lives. It, it, it's, it's a command. It's not a suggestion. It is not something that God is saying. This will be a good thing for you to do. No, it's a command because God. God has a plan. So when you begin to look at this, we find out that they decided to stop where they were and to build the city and a tower. And building the city and a tower was not simply just a construction project, but it was a, 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 a place where they were now in direct opposition to God. They were in a position where they knew the command of God, but yet it decided to stop where they were. They decided that that was enough growth. They decided they had gone far enough. They decided that this was the height that they was going to go and then they weren't going to go any further and on top of that by deciding that they also built themselves a tower that was a, of a great height and that great tower was simply a, a monument to their distrust of God they, they built something that could be used as a temple but was not a temple because they weren't worshiping God they had never developed a reverence for God they were operating in a fear of God so they kept worship of God and yet still tried to worship the work of their own hands. Listen, the Bible says that you can't serve two masters. You're going to love one and hate the other. And the reality is that the relationship simply won't allow it with God. God simply says, I'm a jealous God. So it's impossible for God to share time with his creation. God is impossible to share worship with anything other than him because there's nothing other than him that's worthy of the worship. So the Bible tells us here that God comes down and he begins to confound or confuse the language of the people. Now we understand here that when you look at this, there is some conundrums that might come about because there are people who look at this and say, well, you know, the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. Now I want you to understand something about that. God is not the author of confusion is simply very narrow. It is not in the broad, but it is in the narrow. We place it in the broad, but it's supposed to be in the narrow. The narrow is this. God will not be the author of any confusion in the body of Christ, in the church whatsoever. Why? Because he desires that we be as one. He desires that we be unified. Matter of fact, he even says, I sent these apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for, the, for, for one purpose, for the work of the ministry, that they may equip the saints for the work of the ministry. With, how long? Until we all come into the unity and the knowledge of Christ. So the reality is that he's about unity. So when he says, I'm not the author of confusion, he's simply saying, I'll never send confusion into the church. But if confusion is a spirit, if confusion is real, if confusion actually has any substance, whether it be natural or spiritual, then you've got to understand confusion is not its own boss. God is the boss even of confusion. So when the Lord comes down, he picks out of his arsenal the very thing that he's going to use to halt the agenda of man. One of the things that you'll see is that God is not going to let his people have their own agenda in the earth. Now, somebody ought to grab that and say amen. Like if you understood exactly what I'm talking about right here, here, you'll understand that man and now not just any man but God's chosen men are in direct stubborn opposition to the plan of God God has given them a plan they now are in opposition to to his plan and then they develop their own plan but in the midst of his plan he also has another divine salvation plan that will counteract and counter man, man's plan so that man will get back on track with God's plan and then accomplish God's plan and his will see listen don't ask me to say that again I, I, I just need you I hope you got that and listen you can rewind it but I need you to understand that in God's plan was a plan with the knowledge of your plan and God's plan to counteract your plan is not an act of judgment it's an act of mercy listen if you grab hold of that you you really understand that Jesus is actually saying no no, no. 
my act of scattering you and my act of causing confusion so you can't actually accomplish what you want to accomplish. So listen, it, it's me that stood in the way. And listen, some of us are still angry about some stuff that we ought to be praising God about right now. They, they we're still looking and saying, listen, I mean, God, you won't allow me to be what I want to be. And God said, if you ever were what you wanted to be, you would be in direct opposition to me. And I couldn't give you grace. You'd only get my resistance. I resist the proud. That thing right there would make you prideful. As long as you keep looking up to the work of your hands, it's going to mess your head up and you're going to start thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to. So I am standing in opposition to your opposition. I'm standing in direct counteraction to your action and you ought to be glad that I'm putting salve on the wound and won't just let it continue to bleed. You listen, the Lord saw people that were bleeding. He saw people that were chosen that were beginning to assimilate. He saw his people beginning to take on the mindset because understand this, when he scatters them, you understand he does everybody does not rock and roll. Everybody does not pack up and and, and get all their stuff and, and go. When he says bag and baggage, everybody doesn't grab their stuff because everybody's not caught. Many are called, but few are chosen. I need you to understand that the chosen are going through this four separation march. It's the chosen that are being ripped away from what they are accustomed to and what they know. But it's God now offering once again the opportunity to the chosen to go into new places and to new dimensions and to new levels, to see new things and to speak even a whole new way. So when you understand this, You'll understand that God now is beginning to move and he won't allow them to continue to focus on themselves. What a blessing. What a blessing when you begin to look at what God is doing for them. What a blessing when you understand that God is beginning to separate them. There are those that stayed. When you understand that Nimrod built this city, this great city, what later become Babylon, everybody didn't leave. But there were some people that when God said scatter, it wasn't an act of disobedience or obedience that caused the scattering. I need you to understand. It's an act of overt supernatural power that caused them to scatter. And when those that did not not scatter did not scatter I'm sure that there are people who look and say ah look God they're in direct opposition to your will again they're obstinate they're in disobedience but yet they didn't hear the call listen I want you to understand something we're beginning to get some revelation here about the calling of God we're beginning to get the revelation here that some folks don't even get the nod that the Lord said I'm talking to you not him I already know him that, 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 that that's not mine my sheep they know my voice and another they will not follow I call loud and 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 oh but only so so many people heard it for one reason they were never mine in the first place Nimrod is not mine there are people sold to self uh, worship there are people sold to the idea of building an empire and building up a name for themselves the people that are sold they were never mine in the first place I'm letting you know right now by me scattering you and by you being scattered you are selected listen there are some things that happen in your life Life. And listen, when you get a new car, when you get a new house, we look and say, I'm chosen, I'm elected. No, there's some stresses, there's some trouble, there's some issues that happen that only the elect can endure and grow from. And so I want you to understand something. The Lord now is saying, plan accomplished by confusion. Well, here's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use confusion. The, the Bible tells us here that therefore the name is called Babel because the Lord confused the, the, the language of all the earth. Earth. Now, not just there, everywhere in the earth. From from there, from that spot, the Lord scattered them abroad, right? So we begin to see that God is intentionally using confusion of language to stop them. Now, you know, God also dispersed them. Now, I want you to get this, I, and I, I need you to really understand people who didn't want to go yesterday who weren't moved to go yesterday, who didn't think about 
where to go yesterday, who had no plan other than where they are. And overnight, when God scatters them, God also divinely, supernaturally gives them a plan of where to go. And he gives them language. When you begin to look at this, this is a supernatural act of God. The reality is it's impossible for them to travel or to do anything if nobody understood anybody. But the reality is that God begins to create languages right at this moment and places right at this moment where he wants people to be. This is not something that happens over time. This happened overnight. This was a decision that God made and instantly he began to create languages that only this group of people could, could actually understand. Taken literally, this did not develop naturally. This was something that God did and it took only creative, authoritative, supernatural power to do it. But the same one who created the flood and even created the salvation in the ark has the ability to create a language here. And when you begin to look at this, Babel is called confusion, not because they're just confused, but because of the tool that God used to bless. Listen, I need you to understand something. Confusion in the hand of man is a mess. Confusion in the hand of the enemy is destruction. But God can use confusion to actually bless you. I need you to understand that God can use confusion. But when you understand this confusion, you've got to understand and look at this and recognize exactly what's happening here. In the midst of everything that you see here, the, the people of, of, of God, the people of God are mingled together with people who are in opposition to God. Listen, I believe that the people of God don't even know that they're people of God. They're people of God who are the people of God who have not been identified as the people of God because they're identifying themselves by what is popular. There are people right now who are going to emerge but have not emerged because they've never been identified by anybody in, in, in the kingdom but are being identified by people in the world because the people in the kingdom are too much like the world. So when you begin to understand what's happening in Babel, you see the very thing that's happening in the church. The same monument building and the same idea of self and the same building of superstars and megastars, the same idea of being just like Jay-Z, wanting to have the same fan base, wanting to look just like them, wanting to go to the same parties and, and be in the same environment, want to be worshipped and adored just like I was some 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 kind of mega person, like, like this wasn't a gift given to me by God, like this wasn't something that had not been for the Lord, I'd still be out there as a bum on the street. Listen, th those things have caused people to forget, but when you understand God scattering, when you understand the destructive power Power of God, you got to understand that George Bush promised shock and awe, right? And one of the things that he promised in shock and awe was that he promised uh, a, a new type of warfare that was going to be precision warfare, surgical warfare, meaning we have the power to blow up only what we need to blow up and we'll leave what is supposed to remain to remain. But the problem that with that, if you saw Iraq, which is where you get modern day Babylon, which is where all of this is actually happening in Babel, you in, in Babylon line, you'll understand this very same thing that, there, that, that he missed and there were places in, that were blown up. There were places that he didn't intend to target that got hit and that happens all over the world. But when you understand the power of the divine shock and all, when you understand that God gives an eviction notice that's meant to evict you from a place you were never meant to be, evict you from a land that's too dirty for you, evict you from an atmosphere that's too lowbrow for you you that listen there are people right now that are getting spiritual eviction notices and are upset with God and don't understand that God is saying mighty woman of God what are you doing in this environment how in the world are you trying to worship in Babylon 
What in the world makes you think that you can hang with them? What makes you think that there's a connection? Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Do you understand that you're being grieved and they're not growing from you? You're being wilted and they're not being fertilized by you. There is no work that can be done. Listen, I've got to separate you. And there are people right now that are hearing me that are under the sound of my voice that understand exactly what I'm saying. That God is saying it's not going to get no better. You got to get out of there. It's not going to grow. You're not going to get out of there. It's making you better off, but it's not making you better. Listen, I want you to understand government, organization, time, all of these things were right here in the place. Progress, technology, everything is there and man is better off, but he is not better. The reality is that's what hap is happening in so many of our lives. We spend our time trying to build up bigger bank accounts and it has not made us better. Matter of fact, in some cases, it's hindered us from being able to sow where we need to sow. There are things that we could have used to be able to bless the people that, that we love right now, but yet we couldn't because we had this monument, this monumental number that we were looking for. I'll be able to give it to you when I get to this number, not knowing how do you know that tomorrow he won't require of you your life and you'll never be able to give it. They'll get it because you'll be dead and then the bank account will do exactly what it's supposed what was always going to do but yet you missed out because you were building monuments to yourself thinking only about yourself and not recognizing lord teach us to number our days so we've got this organized rebellion we were in this place where man is just in a conundrum we're in this place where God is operating supernaturally, you know, recognizing when you look at language and you understand how people, scientists have looked at language, they outside of attributing it to some supernatural power have never been able to understand how man could create languages. The, the, the you know, Korean dialect and the multiple uh, uh, Chinese dialects and the various African dialects that are in the continent of Africa, not, not like Africa is not a country. It's a continent all of the various dialects people who are scottish who live right next to somebody who's uh, lives in wales who lives right next to somebody who lives in england and england in the north sounds different than the cockney in the south so languages is something that it, we can see here has been instituted by god god has picked it and though these people over here couldn't understand it god used that very same thing to prove now a that his salvation plan has in it so separation God's salvation plan has in it pulling you away so you can see who you are do you understand that they had no idea who they were they were beginning to take on a mentality and a mindset and an attitude of the world and the world was beginning to form them and, and listen do you understand the power that's locked up in the scripture do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, get this. Somebody better grab hold of this right now. When the Lord says, don't be conformed, know that the world is trying to conform you. So that means that you got to get violent with this idea of conformity. And, and the Lord says, but be transformed. You then have to, in your mentality, get violent against the shell of conformity that the world is trying to spray over you every single day that the world is trying to mold you you got to break out of that you got to be willing to be different and so the tower of babel has ended and we get to verse 10 and we get to this place that doesn't seem to fit and so when you get here this says and this is the genealogy of shim Shem was 100 years old and begot Arphahad two years after the flood. After he begot Arphahad, Shem lived 500 years and begat sons and daughters. Now, we're dealing with man's rebellion. We're dealing with disobedience. And we're dealing with God giving a solution and a cure for man's disobedience. God is now stepping in in the midst of this and brought about division for the purpose of addition and multiplication i don't want to get too heavy into math there but i want you to see that in the mathematic world some of that may seem impossible but in god's mathematics he can even subtract and divide 
and bring about multiplication and addition. So I need you to understand God's ways are not like our ways. So we look and we expect addition, but sometimes there's a, a, a subtraction. We look and expect a shining star, but somehow there may be people that are in a place of quiet obedience. So when we begin to look at this, God is now saying, in, in, in the midst of this calamity, I am going to start again. And I already have the material to start again. I'm going to start it over. There's going to be a brand new thing that's about to happen. And I have the material already to do it. I'm going to start with a man like I always do. And that man may be oblivious to the fact that he is selected and chosen. But he is selected and chosen. When you begin to look at this, God is beginning to now do what he's always what he's done throughout time and history he has always left for himself a remnant listen i want you to get excited today about the idea that you are part of this remnant that in the midst of all that's going on in the midst of scandal in the midst of things that are being exposed god has left for himself a remnant now this is important because the remnant sometimes is not aware that they're a remnant some sometimes the remnant does not even know that they are part of the cloth they're just quietly doing what they've been called to do and have no idea that they're even being acknowledged in heaven to see the reality is shim is not a shining star here shim is not a general here shim is not somebody that that, that stands on a mountain and stands against the people not at all but god is now beginning to add something in the genealogy now in the genealogy that we see in Genesis chapter 10 we see a national genealogy we see a genealogy that deals with the nations but now God is beginning to narrow the thing down listen it, it, he's gonna come from that region and, and then he's gonna come from that state and then he's gonna come from that city and he's gonna come from that neighborhood and then he begins to come to that house and now he's beginning to narrow it down listen some people need to get excited right where you are because God's narrowing it down right now that there are some things that were broad five years ago and they're beginning to get narrow and they're they're zeroing in on you and this quiet faith that you've been operating in this this quiet favor that you've got over your life this quiet worship where nobody knows you no no title god is, is acknowledging you it's a major thing when people sometimes can forget you and they don't acknowledge you and they think that you're nothing but yet god is now saying i'm, I'm about to start again and i'm about to start again with somebody that doesn't look like it but this is is my way see when you begin to look at Noah to Jesus God has always had people that were multiples around them yet out of a family yet out of a whole group he picks one there, there, there may be multiple that are there but he's got one of all of Noah of the Noah's three sons God now comes and says you're super favorite now I want you to get this the sons are favored by God because they get uh, they, they, they're saved but then there are those that are super favored man and I want you to get the super favor the super favor is that I can start something with you in your bloodline I want you to get that listen super favorite is you've got something in you that I put in you that's got staying power that will that will be a praise and a worship that will last through generations super favorite is I have the ability to pass my praise and worship along to those that are chosen super favorite means I may not affect everybody but I will not ever miss the one I'm supposed to give it to so the reality is in super favorite Noah was not successful in giving this to Ham or, or to giving this to Japheth but he gave it to, to Shem and Shem had sons and daughters that's what it said but we're talking about Arphahad that was the one that he was super favorite in I've got one that's going to pass it down and listen I want to that's why you need to pray in front of your children that's why you need to pray in front of your friends that's why you need to pray over your family because you might be have one in the family that's super favored and listen I'm telling you right now if you're super favored you got to get loud about your worship you got to get loud about your praise if you're super favored listen this is it right here and, and, and I want you to get this because when you understand what's happening here this is really important and this is really powerful and and I, and I want you to understand what God is doing. And, and listen, this is this is really important that you really begin to see this. 
when you hear what God is doing here, and when you hear what he is doing here with this flood narrative, you'll understand something. And we've got to turn this thing on. I want you to get this. He mentions the flood. And in Genesis, it's the last time that he talks about the flood. It's the last time that he talks about the old things. It's the last time that he talks about the old problem. And it's now that he begins to move into a new beginning. It's now that he begins to move them into a new dimension. It's now that he begins to say, I found one that I can use. I found one that I can pick. And down through the lines, Jesus has done this very same thing. Old things have passed away. And my hope is that you get into worship here today. My hope is that you get into a place where you understand that old worries are over, that old times are over, that God is saying, listen, I'm telling you right now that I've got somebody in quiet obedience. I've got somebody operating right now in quiet obedience that may not be able to understand who they are. But if you get this, if you get what I'm saying to you right now, you'll understand that in this quiet obedience that God has seen you in what seems like nothing, God has seen you. Listen, I want you to understand this. Shem had five sons. He had five sons. But God chose him. You are chosen generation. And I want you to get that. And God said, inside of you, inside your belly is living waters. So I need you to get this. This is important. God didn't look down and say, yeah, that's a guy who's going to do right. That's a, that's a person I'm picking him because that's my guy. I know he's going to be obedient to me. No, I need you to understand why God did this. He did this by grace and grace alone. That means that your salvation, that means that the whole plan of salvation, that means that everything that God has planned to happen is a work that he has done from A to Z, from the beginning to the end, a work that only he could do. It's not by merit. It's not because anybody deserved it. It's not because Shem deserved it. It's not because David deserved it. It's not because Abraham deserved it. But it's simply because of the grace of God. Because if they deserved it, if they had done anything to deserve it, they'd be able to brag and to boast within themselves. But if you look at Abraham's bloodline, you see that Abraham had problems in his bloodline, that Abraham had issues in his bloodline. There was idolatry. There was pagan worship in his bloodline. But God sees something. And I want you to understand that God sees something in you, too. He sees something in you. He's called you before the foundation of the world that has nothing to do with what you've done. He's separating you. Because he's called you to do something special. To be something special. So step out. Step out. And be willing to be different. Be willing to be his. Listen, I'm so happy that you're here today. And I just thank God for you. And that you have heard this word. And I want you to understand that the reality is. That we're here so that you can actually walk in this word. So you can hear this word but also do this word and know that though there may be scattering that's going on in your life and there may be things that seem like they're confusing and there's confusion around you God knows where you are he knows how to destroy the things around you and to make sure that you and who you're supposed to be remains listen have an awesome awesome Sunday today and I want you to understand this that even in your today in your giving for those that are moved to sow, I want to make sure that you don't look at this as an act of just generosity, but that this is an extension of your worship. That everything you do when you give, you give to this ministry, when you give to people, when you give of your time, that you are not just being nice, but that you understand that God, this is an extension of worship. And we thank you for it. So Father, we just bless you today. We thank you for your people. And God, we just bless you right now because we know what you are going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.